Today I'm going to be showing, like, presenting to you the original Star Spangled Banner. It was written by Francis Scott Key. I'm doing this project by me. Okay. Francis, he was the one who wrote the original Star Spangled Banner. He was a lawyer in Belmont. Francis was sent over to the British to get back their doctor, who was thought as a spy by them. And well, he got the doctor back, but Francis and the doctor overheard plans that the British were going to do, like attack the Americans, and so they wouldn't let him go till the war was over. People, Francis Scott Key is the one who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. As many people don't know, the defense of Fort McHenry the melody we use for the Star Spangled Banner is called the Akron in Heaven, or AKA the Drinking Song. This right here is just the original Star Spangled Banner. Um, if you have not noticed, but we only use the first stanza of the, of the Star Spangled Banner. I feel like that if we were to say the whole thing, it would take a while for us to pronounce it because there's a lot of big and hard words in there. Um, I also feel like that the first stanza is easier to say and connect with. I'm going to say my, say it now. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, or so proudly we hail at the twilight of last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars, to the Paris fight of the ramparts we watched, or so gay. Oh my gosh. Can I start over? Mm -hmm. Oh, say, can you see, by the dawn's early light, where so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars, through the perilous fight, and the ramparts we watched, were so gallantly streaming. Oh, say, can you see, by the dawn's early light, <sighs> ramparts red glare, the bombs bursting in air, Gave proof of the night that our flag was still there. O oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is the second stanza. On the shores dimly seen through the mist of the deep where the foes hauntly host in dread silence responses what is that which O oh, breeze or the towering steep as it fitfully blows half consoles Half dissolves, now it catches the gleam of the movie, the f morning first beam, and the fall glory reflect, now shines in the stream. Tis the star spangled banner, oh, long may it wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. The third stanza. And where it is at, bend who so violently swore that the house of Coco of war, in the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood is washed out, their full footsteps, population, no refuge could save the hiring slave, fear them, the terror of the fight, or the gloom of the grave, and the star single banner, and Trumpfully dove away for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Do you have questions? Yeah. Do you have any more slides you want me to get through? Or? No, these are all my slides I have. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the introduction. Um, can you kind of give the audience a little bit of an idea of how we get to this point where Brad Scott Key's out uh, helping save a local doctor? I mean, can you give us a little bit of a, just a basic introduction of um, when this is? I mean, we're fighting against the British, but can you kind of talk to us about timeline when this is? 
Um, I know he wrote the Star Spangled Banner in 19, no, it's 18, 52 maybe, but I think it would be like sometime after, like after that, because it didn't become our Star, our Star Spangled Banner until 19 something. Um, so when he first publishes this, it's a poem, you said, right? Yeah, it's a poem. Um, do you have any idea of how it transitioned from a poem to becoming popular enough to be, to be changed into a song? Did he intend it to be a song? He did not intend it to be a song. It was just something he was, wrote. He was writing on when he was on the boat that was bombing the Fort McHenry. Okay. Can you give me an idea of where Fort McHenry's at? Uh, I do not know that. Okay. Are there any aspects to the second or third stanza that you shared that are completely different than what most Americans would, would think about the National Anthem today? You mean like stuff that like we wouldn't know, like don't yeah, understand. Yeah, what are the most surprising parts about the second and third stanza that most Americans maybe don't know about? Is there anything in there that you feel like is important that we should know about? Um, it should, I feel like the, the other three stanzas for the first one, they're, they all end with the same thing, like for the land of the free and the home of the brave, they all, I, most people don't even know that there's three other stanzas. Right. I feel like all these stanzas just have a story telling, like, the story of how it, like, how they fought and how, like, it ended. Okay. So this is a song that, you know, for, for you as a middle schooler, you, you might hear or sing along to mm -hmm. two, three, four times a week, depending on basketball games and things like that. So... Uh, what are some parts of the song that people sometimes sing or say or hear but really don't pay much attention to from your point of view? Um, I feel like people, like, <coughs> sorry, they, okay. um, Perilous fight or the ramparts, red glare, the bombs bursting in the air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Okay. I feel like most people just sing that, but they don't really know the story, how it's being told. Okay. So what is the biggest lesson or um, most historical aspect of that first stanza that we do sing so often? What do you think is the most important part that we do sing? Uh, my opinion is... For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Okay. Did Francis Scott Key um, gain popularity from this in his lifetime? He did. He did? Yes. Okay. So this is something that people, I mean, they would have known about him. Was he known as a poet at this point, or did he stay an attorney? Was this something that launched a great writing career for him or um I know is in my research I know he did write a lot like he was a good writer but I'm pretty sure he stayed a lawyer okay for future generations of um, American students why is it important for us to keep singing a song about something that happened so long ago. I mean, we haven't fought the British since this war. Why are we still singing about it? We're still singing about it because we're still giving respect and we're still like, I feel like we're praising that we still won this fight. Okay. What was your favorite part of this research? My favorite part of this research is probably I did, when I first began, I did not know that there was four stanzas. That was probably my favorite part, just reading through them and learning more about it. Okay. Thank you very much.